Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar uh, on a hot topic, cybersecurity and how we are enhancing cybersecurity with our hardened switching portfolio. My name is Deanne Corcoran. I work for on the Alcatel-Lucent Enterprise Network Business Division unit, and I'm your webinar host for today. A uh, couple housekeeping items before I introduce our speaker and we get started. The call's being recorded. If you have any objections, you can certainly disconnect now. All lines are muted during the presentation. After the presentation, we love getting questions from the attendees. You can also post a written question at any time during the webinar via the questions tab, and those will be addressed first at the end. The presentation has been loaded in PDF format into the handout section, so you can certainly download that at any time. Um, and then we'll also be flipping through the um, PowerPoint as the webinar progresses. There's going to be a poll towards the end of the webinar, so pay attention for that and please answer. And I think I've covered everything. We're so grateful you're here, uh, whether you're uh, an employee, a highly valued business partner, an end customer, or just someone random. Welcome, welcome. Our speaker for today is uh, Abu Bakar Dangula. I hope I pronounced that right, who is a network solutions architecture, uh, architect, sorry, here at Alcatel Lucent Enterprise, and Abu is in Dubai. So he's presenting late at night, so go easy on him. Um, <laughs> Abu, if you want to say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to hand the mic over to you, and uh, we'll get going. Sure, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone, welcome to this webinar. My name is Abu Bakr. Um, I'm a network solution architect working for Alcatel Lucent Enterprise. So I'll be, be presenting a topic which is uh, often disregarded when it comes to hardening your mission critical infrastructure, which is the cybersecurity aspect of, of it. So without further ado, let's let's get started and I'll show you the agenda. So here's the agenda for today. So I will start with a brief introduction into our topic. Uh, then we will discuss the key differentiators and the advanced security features that Alcatel Lucent Enterprise offers with its switching and wireless portfolio that helps to tackle cybersecurity ch cyber security challenges in the IoT and uh, mission, mission critical networks. Uh, after that, <clears throat> we will briefly go over the Alcatel Lucent Enterprise hardened switching portfolio and some of the key features of each of uh, our switching models. Um, after that, we will uh, follow that with our wireless portfolio, which is our Omni Access Teller access points. Um, then we will uh, view some of the key security compliance and certifications that Alcatel Lucent Enterprise Solutions and Services comply with. And then we will close with some key takeaways and the Q&A. So without further ado, let's get started. So we will start with a brief introduction, uh, first of all, with the uh, market trends and we will discuss ALE's uh, digital age networking strategy and discuss the dangers of uh, cybersecurity breaches uh, in IoT and mission critical networks. So what is driving the market? First, uh, we have the massive adoption of Internet of Things. Um, analysts from Gartner, they predict that by the end of the year, we will have more than 50% of the applications will be IoT enabled, and this will bring a new era of interconnectivity and data-driven de decision-making. And another uh, point that's driving the market is the ongoing digi digitalization of the core business processes. And this is redefining how businesses deliver services and respond to competitors. So it is more important than ever to provide consistently high customer and employee experience in a digital world at any time, at any place, and any, using any device. So ma also many companies are struggling with the increased complexity and the compliance requirements for their IT and OT systems, while at the same time, they're experiencing uh, a shortage of uh, skilled resources. So automation, it, uh, it helps companies to keep their businesses performing at an optimal level and uh, increasingly through advanced technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So these technologies play a critical role in the operations of increasingly complex networks, which need to be monitored, they need to be configured and uh, secured also at a speed beyond human capability. So a modern network management platforms, they need to be simple. They need to interpret uh, and uh, be precise in their execution to ensure that the performance, security, and compliance is always maintained. And of course, uh, bandwidth, uh, the world is hungry for data. So um, the total worldwide data created, captured, and copied, and consumed is expected to grow uh, to over 180 zettabytes by uh, 2025. So that's approximately 
22,000 gigabytes per person on the planet. So uh, our vision at ALE is how do we enable this new normal? So the, the solution is our, uh, and their digital transformation is digital age networking. So ALE's digital age networking is about delivering autonomous networks to support enterprises' digital transformation. So the autonomous network is the foundation of a reliable network infrastructure, which is at the core of every business. We want the networks to be configured and uh, provisioned automatically, and we want them to be ready to ensure mission critical secure network operations while at the same time optimizing user, user experience. So we want them to adapt automatically to the changing business conditions. Also, uh, you know, as part of our digital aid networking is the IoT capability, which offers secure onboarding, management, and monitoring of any IoT device. So in, able, uh, in order to enable business agility and transformation. So IoT devices, they can bring uh, rich and accurate data to business applications and processes, uh, creating better customer experiences and enabling better business decisions. But they need to be appropriately classified and securely managed. So the rapid adoption of IoT endpoints across all industries makes this a priority for every organization. And of course, once you have securely and automa uh, automatically onboarded all of your, your devices, you need to maximize the value of different elements of your business, including the data that you are generating. So integrating workflows from applications, infrastructure, devices, and employees, it's the key to business innovation and enhance productivity and increase revenue. So we are here to talk about harsh networks. So let's define what makes a network harsh or an environment harsh. Sorry. So a harsh environment is uh, for a network is is the location where, you know, the traditional network infrastructure it faces significant challenges due to difficult conditions. Whether it can be uh, uh, these conditions, of course, they can impact the performance, reliability, and the stability of the of the system. So we are talking about areas that are subject to extreme temperatures, um, violent wind, vibration, shock dust, even electromagnetic interference. So all of these places uh, did not need in the past, They're, or they cannot afford, uh, you know, but now they need IP connectivity. So some of the industries where ruggedized products are particularly uh, relevant uh, are shown here. Um, for example, we have, we can name uh, transportation, utilities, and the energy tech sector, and industrial manufacturing, maritime, smart cities, military, and so on. All of these, they, they have a use case for uh, using ruggedized uh, products. So as you may be well aware that uh, digital transformation and digitalization of the industrial landscape is changing. Uh, it's changing the cybersecurity expectations. So included as well is the proliferation and explosion of IoT devices and IoT devices. So the network infrastructure needs to be prepared for such digitalization by being prepared for such challenges. So having a physically hardened infrastructure is no longer enough. You need to consider, consider the cybersecurity aspect of it. So I will show a few examples uh, here where uh, some cybersecurity attacks that, that have had a major impact on critical infrastructure and they caused heavy damage due to the lack of a holistic approach to cybersecurity. So uh, the first one I want to talk about is, as you may have heard about it, is the col colonial pipeline uh, ransomware attack. It, it happened back in uh, May 2021. So this uh, pipeline, it's, it's uh, mainly carrying gasoline and uh, jet fuel uh, from Texas uh, to the southeastern United States. Um, the attack, it, it crippled the fuel deliveries in the United States on the East Coast, uh, by, and they had to shut down the entire pipeline and the state of emergency was declared. And this caused the, exec, uh, the, the president, the US president, to sign an executive order uh, in order to increase the so, uh, software security standards and any sales to the government, they need to be uh, uh, increase the security standards and tighten the detection and security of existing systems and to improve also the information sharing and incident response. And also, we have many other attacks, such as the the famous uh, solar winds attack, which happened back in 2020. It affected m multiple federal government agencies, including the United States Defense, Treasury, State, and Homeland uh, Security Departments. Another example is the WannaCry ransomware, uh, which is spread all over uh, 100 countries, and it caused several factories to shut down as well. So. Included in these uh, security attacks also is the explosion, like I mentioned, of IoT devices. So under normal usage, IoT devices are harmless. Um, but they, since they are network devices and they have an operating system, then they are susceptible to hacking and malware. So uh, this puts them at risk to be recruited and enslaved into a bot army. So one example is that October 2016. 
where a distributed denial of service attack happened against Dyn, which is a DNS provider in the US. It has also clients in Europe and North America. So Dyn was attacked three times in the same day, and uh, the resulting analysis confirmed that IoT devices such as cameras, baby monitors, uh, Wi-Fi routers, printers, they have been compromised with a malware variant. It's called. It's based on the Mirai source code. So Mirai is a, it's a malware that turns network devices that are running Linux into a remotely controlled bots, and they can be used as a large-scale uh, botnet. They can be part of a botnet of large-scale network. So another incident of a uh, distributed denial of service attack um, happened in Finland in two apartment buildings, and it caused the heat to shut down for several days. So there's many, many more examples which I can list here, but there are many more incidents which indicate the potential security risk involved in deploying IoT devices in your network. So the nature of cybersecurity threats is changing. Hackers no longer use the old fashioned methods. They have now artificial intelligence, they have machine learning, so they can create more sophisticated and automated attacks. So new social engineering techniques, they enable criminals to connect crumbs of information found across social media to create profiles of individuals or data held by organizations. So as the companies undergo digital transformation, their cybersecurity needs are becoming more complex and more dynamic. So the use of interconnected devices and the blurring between traditional network boundaries are adding to this complexity. And all of these changes are happening at an ever increasing speed. So all of these cyber attacks I mentioned, they can be avoided by ensuring that your network devices do not have any embedded backdoors, which can be easily exploited. So uh, where, do, where do ALE products come in the picture? So we will go through a few key differentiators and advanced security features that ALE offers with their hardware switching and wireless portfolio. So ALE brings advanced uh, enterprise security features and functionalities to the industrial world. So the first feature I want to start with is ALE's secure diversified code. So many uh, network operating systems, they come with vulnerabilities, which is normal, and they can be exploited by, easily by any hacker. So there's a, a threat potential in software for backdoor threats and embedded malware and exposure of proprietary and or classified information. This is not the case with the ALE uh, operating system, which is called AOS. So ALE employs a set of technologies to ensure that the switch integrity differentiate ALE from the competition. So to ensure that the uh, to ensure network uh, integrity, the network equipment, ALE offers, first of all, independent uh, third-party verification and validation. So any source code analysis, white box and black box testing, and searching for vulnerabilities in external in in interfaces. So ALE provides independent verification and validation on external interfaces, which connect to the software. Well, uh, so many of these interfaces include the HTTPS interface, the login interface, the NTP interface, the CLI interface, and the IP port interface, even the SNMP interface. So all of these interfaces, we, we provide independent verification uh, for them uh, and uh, to identify any security vulnerabilities of the software by a third party to ensure that the network is, uh, uh, to ensure that the network infrastructure uh, has integrity. So uh, AOS also implements software diversification uh, with a, a technique called address-based layout ran randomization, which is uh, short, uh, short for it is ASLR. So what happens is uh, ASLR, it results every time you reboot the switch, it will, be, it will uh, run a unique memory layout. So every time it reboots, this, uh, it will be a different layout of the memory. So this will uh, impede any or prevent any software exploitation. And also AOS provides secure software delivery. So there's a dedicated USA-based servers for any US government download. And another feature is the TA compliance. So ALE uh, USA supply chain process enables designation of OmniSwitch models as TA CEO, which is country of origin USA. So this is the default operation of AOS. There's no charge. There's no additional licensing, which is required. So this is the default of uh, AOS switches. So now we will talk about uh, one of the embedded features uh, which we have in our switching portfolio, which is also one of the most common security issues, which I mentioned earlier, which is a denial of service attacks, uh, especially from IoT devices. So a DOS or a denial of service attack, it's a security attack that aims at devices that are available on a private or a private network or the internet. So the first line of defense against these attacks starts with your network switches, which they should filter DOS attacks by default. So a distributed denial service is even more dis disruptive because as you can see in this figure, uh, it's a, a, a malicious actor uses a botnet zombie uh, network to deliver a DOS attack. 
So most network vendors, they have ways of protecting against DOS attacks. However, an important difference is that ALE offers DOS featuring, filtering features, which are enabled by default. So from the moment the switch is turned on, network access is secure. So these basic DOS filtering features, they strengthen the foundation of secure connectivity and the operation of IoT devices. So a few attacks uh, aimed at system bugs or set vulnerabilities, for example, teardrop attacks, uh, other uh, well, other types of attacks, they involve generating a large volume of data uh, of traffic so that network service is denied to the legitimate uh, users. So the switch can be set up to detect various types of port scans by monitoring uh, for TCP or UDP packets uh, sent to open or closed uh, ports. So another advanced security features uh, feature we offer in our hardened switch portfolio is MaxSec. MaxSec, which stands for Max Security, it provides point-to-point -point, uh, security on Ethernet links between directly connected nodes. So MaxSec is an IEEE standard. It uh, specifies how all or part of the layer two network can be transparently secured. So it provides connectionless user data confidentiality and uh, frame data integrity uh, and data origin authenticity, as well as optionally, you can encrypt the data as well. So MaxSec is intended for the wired network. It's not, it's not for wireless network because wireless networks, they use different protocol. So uh, MaxSec, it, uh, it prevents DOS attacks, man in the middle attacks, or any playback attacks and so on. So it can be used to secure even the uh, most of the traffic on Ethernet links, even the LLDP frames or the LACP frames or the R packets and so on. All of these are inherently secured. So MaxSec enabled links, uh, they are secured using uh, matching security keys between the switches. So uh, I want to speak next about our mi micro um, segmentation strategy. So we use SPB, which is short for shortest path bridging. It's an IEEE networking standard. Its code is 802.1 EQ. Uh, its primary focus of uh, SPB was to address the spanning tree protocol challenges. However, SPB is more than just an SP STP evolution. So it's similar to MPLS, but uh, SPB provides uh, uh, VPN functionality, which is similar to M MPLS, but it's much simpler to, to deploy and maintain, and it results in a lower total cost of ownership. So MPLS, it requires a stack of protocols. For example, you need to enable uh, IGP in your underlay, you need to enable LDP, you need to enable OSP, um, MPBGP. So all of these stack of protocols you need to enable in order to enable MPLS. But for SPB, it relies on a single uh, protocol to provide this whole functionality, which is ISIS. So ALE supports the SPB-M, which is the Mac and Mac mode of the standard. So SPB, it uses a complete picture of the network to ensure that the IP traffic, it takes the shortest path possible to reach the destination. So SPB capable nodes can calculate and use multiple available paths when, when uh, required. And they will dynamically adjust to changes, making the virtualization very easy. So even in a multi-vendor enterprise network, uh, it uses all the network resources to reduce or even eliminate network bottlenecks. So the redundant links, they, they no longer sit idle. Uh, they are available for immediate utilization. So SPB, it's an, it's an ideal solution for macro and micro segmentation. First, because it's really easy to create virtual segments for different user communities or device types without increasing any of the operational complexity. So, and second, also because it's fully integrated with Access Guardian, uh, which is ALE's uh, network admission control framework. I will talk about that in the next slide as well. So in short, SPB, it's, uh, it makes it easier to adopt a zero trust framework based on software defined segmentation. So another feature, which is the last feature I want to talk about is uh, uh, which supports an organization to build a zero trust framework uh, using different micro segmentation strategies and automation. It's called the uh, user network profile, which is UMP. So UNP is embedded in the access layer switches and the access points which is a feature that's unique to ALE. So UNP is a set of rules based on devices, users, and applications, uh, classification define, defining the security and network quality of service, which is to be enforced at the access port. So UNP enables the network to follow the user and automatically adjust the configuration depending on where the user is connected, instead of the tr traditional approach based on static configuration, based on the switch port or the AP or the SSID. So UNP associates a user or a group of users with certain uh, network characteristics 
uh, like what VLAN to use, what security policies to use, what QS policies, what prioritization to, to give. So all of these, th this mechanism, the network becomes more intelligent and it can automatically adjust as it identifies who the user is. So this is a key capability to support mobility as it provides the same experience as the users move around the, the network. So let, let's, in order to make it clear, so let's look at an example. For example, you have three different kinds of profiles, one for executives, one for uh, employees, and one for guests. So everyone is assigned, of course, different VLAN, so their traffic do not mix. So the executive, uh, for example, he, he gets guaranteed high bandwidth, uh, he gets high priority, and he gets access to all the servers in the network. But the employee might, might not be the same. He might have access to most of the network, but not the HR or the finance or the sales data servers. Uh, they might, might be granted medium amount of bandwidth, and the priority might also be medium, not the same as the executives. So now the guest, uh, is completely isolated in a separate VLAN and they may have internet access only and the bandwidth may even be best effort with the lowest priority. So with this mechanism, uh, the users are free to move around the network. As soon as they connect, the network will identify who they are and automatically adjust on these predefined profiles. So in summary, UMP, it, it minimize, minimizes the IT effort by eliminating the need to manually adjust the network. And second, it improves uh, mobile application delivery performance by fine tuning the network. So users have the same experience wherever they're connected and it provides consistent security throughout the network. So this is one of the key features. So now let's briefly go over the ALE hardened switching portfolio and some of the key features of each model. So uh, we will start with the advanced model, which is the 6865. So 6865 is a family of ruggedized uh, advanced layer three switches. They are scap scalable. They are designed to operate in, uh, in the harshest industrial environments with severe temperatures. They are, they are high bandwidth switches and they are ideal for industrial and mission critical applications. And they are very easy to deploy. Um, they offer out of the box plug and play zero touch provisioning. They offer network automation and disaster recovery options. Uh, they also feature the autofabric technology, uh, which simplifies the installation and service provisioning. And these switches, they are designed to operate in uh, extended temperatures. They offer higher EMI, EMC tolerance, and they have a flexible range of power inputs options and high surge protection. So the 6865, it also offers the uh, precision time protocol uh, capabilities for timing requirements, especially in, in industrial IoT devices. It also offers 75 uh, HPOE uh, and uh, fast perpetual PoE as well. And uh, these switches, they support the advanced SPB technology. And, uh, and um, uh, this is used for to, to efficiently roll out any VPN services on the edge. So now we'll discuss also the 6465 model. It comes in two models. One is the standard one, and the other one is the extended temperature model. So uh, the standard model is a series of compact switches. It's fanless, it's ruggedized, and it's ideal for industrial applications such as uh, intelligent transport, railway, smart cities, utilities, and so on. Uh, they are very easy to deploy as well. They, they have plug and play and zero touch provisioning. And uh, they are designed to operate in extended temperatures as well with higher uh, EMI and EMC tolerance. And they have a flexible range of power inputs, inputs as well. They offer uh, all of the 6465 uh, family. They support the uh, compliant 60 watt PoE. And they, they support as well precision time protocol for peer-to-peer -peer and end-to-end -end transparent clock. So all of the 6465 models, they support layer two encryption uh, for MaxSec as well. So the other switch is the extended temperature model. And this is uh, this uh, use case deployment is in residential or business metro Ethernet access offered by server pro service providers for, for example, for triple play service. And they can be deployed as well for smart cities or buildings or transportation. And uh, they are very easy to deploy as well. They offer the same uh, plug and play uh, out of the box and uh, zero touch provisioning. And they offer extended temperature range from uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius all the way to 60 degrees Celsius of ambient uh, temperature range. And the fans only run if the switch is operated between 45 and 60. So the fans, they remain off until they reach the 45 degrees Celsius and then the fans turn on. So this PoE switch is offers, uh, it offers a value power efficient access for powering smart buildings subsystems such as lighting, CCTV or HVAC. And uh, the PoE model, it's compliant with uh, 802.3 AF and AT, and it offers 115 watts of power 
uh, for PoE attached devices. And to, also supports uh, precision time protocol and MaxSec uh, for layer two encryption capabilities. So after the switching portfolio, let's take a brief overview of the uh, outdoor wireless uh, portfolio and some of the key features of each model. So we have different uh, four different outdoor APs available in our portfolio. Uh, they are all recognized uh, that supports uh, IP67 standard for harsh outdoor environments. As explained before, they can handle exposure to high and low temperatures, uh, persistent moisture, moisture and uh, humidity and uh, industrial uh, surge protection as well. So the AP1251 uh, and all the rest of the 1200 series, they deliver uh, Wi-Fi 5, and it's ideal for low to medium density outdoor environment. We also have the 1360 series, which is Wi-Fi 6 access point, and it, it enables faster speeds with more capacity and efficient airtime allocation uh, for both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And uh, it addresses the the 1360, it includes also integrated with Bluetooth and Zigbee radio, which enables uh, location and building automation services. So this is ideal for medium to higher density outdoor environment. Uh, as mentioned also before, our APs can be managed uh, from OmniVista, which is our network management system. And uh, they can also manage this, uh, this Om OmniVista can manage also the switches. They make it uh, so you can control your entire network from a single plane of glass. So in terms of security also, um, um, WPA3 is supported in all of our standard access points. So this is a quick comparison of each model. So this enables the customer to choose the best model based on the requirements. Uh, 12, uh, AP1251 series, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi 5 access point with an internal antenna and supports WPA3 as well. And uh, the 1360 uh, series, they are all Wi-Fi 6 models that come with IoT support, uh, BLE and Zigbee, and multi-gig support and a socket for SFP as well. So the 1362, the difference is that it, it needs to be purchased with an external antenna as well. So the next topic, which is the key topic in this presentation, is the I want to present the security compliance and certifications. So at ALE, our solutions and services, they comply uh, with the applicable regulations and the standards to keep your data, networks, and information secure and it keeps your work practices environmentally friendly as well. So ALE solutions that are extensively certified, which validates our technology and services, safety and security. Our solutions are ISO 27001, IEC, uh, which is industrial uh, environmental, European GDPR, um, HIPAA, uh, French HDS, ISO 15408, uh, common, uh, common criteria evaluation assurance level two, certified and there's many more certifications it depends on the product so the cover government and customers they demand that the co companies they respect tough security regulations and maintain high privacy standards so ALE helps you to meet this challenge and to mitigate the risk of damage to your clients and business caused by security breaches so what does security compliance mean for your business so businesses they must adhere to certain regulations and standards at the government and regional and industrial level as well this is to ensure the full end-to-end -end compliance of highly regulated markets. LE products, they comply with data, data production, protection standards and regulations designed to protect privacy. So moreover, our solutions, are they rely on certified processes in, or, in accordance with legal requirements. So we will go through the specific key security certifications that our uh, portfolio is compliant with and the per product, per product certification is available on the data sheet, which you can find on the website. So let's begin with common criteria. So this is a certification which provides uh, assurance that the process uh, of specification, the implementation and evaluation of a software's or IT product security has been conducted in a rigorous standard and repeatable manner at a level that is com com commensurate with the, with the target environment for use. So a common criteria is used as a basis for government-driven a certification scheme and typically evaluations are conducted for the federal government agencies and critical infrastructure as well. So the 6865 uh, and the 6465 models, uh, they are level two structurally tested, which is for the uh, evaluation assurance level two. So they are also certified for NDCPP, which is for network device collaboration, uh, co collaborative protection profile. Uh, and they, uh, they are developed by the network international technical community. You can uh, click on these links and uh, find more about uh, about the certifications as well. So um, 
our omni our switches have been embedded in federal networks for more than 20 years and they didn't get a single security incident reported so combined with the durability of our switches uh, these prefer the, the pro these performance characteristics are just part of the reasons why the, our omni switches are gitc certified which is for joint interoperability test command so uh, it's also meant it's also uh, approved on the department of defense uh, product list and they deploy deploy deployed throughout the u.s navy as well so the 6865 and the 6465 models, they are also FIPS 140-2 certified at security level one, which provides the basic security requirements um, that, that are specified for a cryptographic module. And uh, FIPS, which stands for Federal Information Processing Standard, uh, it's a US and Canadian co-sponsored co uh, security standard for hardware, software, and firmware solutions. So it provides a benchmark for validating the effectiveness of cryptographic hardware. So in US uh, government procurement, all solutions that use cryptography must complete this uh, validation to ensure end users receive a high degree of security and assurance and dependability. So uh, at ALE, uh, we believe that uh, security should be a process. Uh, it's not a product, it's not a single product that can ensure your security. So this is why ALE proposes an end-to-end -end strategy uh, to provide network security and to minimize your risk with a comprehensive layered approach. So we will start with the user and device authentication. So only authorized, authorized users and devices are allowed to be connected to the network. Then we look at the applications running in the network and we use analytics and application visibility to decide what actions to take. And then we monitor the network integrity to ensure that it's running on the optimal at optimal performance. Our, uh, uh, software technology it protects the operation operating system at every switch and we use iot containment as well to provide secure access and separation into different containers so then we recommend the application of best practices for which we provide a number of design guides we provide a number of documents and finally we keep uh, the software uh, the system software up to date which uh, can be included as part of the support con uh, contract so this, this whole procedure will allow you to have a holistic and layered approach to secure your mission critical network infrastructure. So in conclusion, the next time you're looking for a hardened switching for your mission critical infrastructure, do not forget about the cybersecurity aspect. So you, you have to look for a product that has also passed the most stringent uh, objective and independent security attestations and can ensure the security of your critical infrastructure. Our field proven hardened switching portfolio is not only physically hardened, but it also comes embedded with software protection, automation features, and supports advanced security features and supports encryption of your most critical data and helps you to achieve a zero trust framework in your critical infrastructure as well. So thank you. And uh, I'm handing over the mic to Diane. Hey, great job. You are a fast talker. Abu Bakr, yeah, I love it. I told you. <laughs> you did tell me, and now I believe you. You are certainly a fast talker. So before we hit the question panel, I'm just going to launch a poll. Uh, you won't be able to see it on your screen, uh, Abu, but everybody else will. Um, does the customer assessment interest you? And if people want to answer, that would be great. Um, Awesome, we're collecting some responses. And then I'll hit the question panel. And if anybody else has other questions they wanna ask on the panel, don't hesitate. Also, you're welcome to raise your hand and I will happily unmute your line. So you can talk directly to Abu. Um, just one second. So let me close that. And then uh, we can hit the question panel. So the first question I had was, let me come back and find it. Uh, where did it go? Sorry. Can you connect your hardened switches in a stack? Everybody's stacking. Uh, yes. Uh, if you check the data sheet, it, it will tell you how many you can uh, connect them in a stack. But uh, just uh, as a summary, uh, the 6865 model uh, can be connected in a stack of up to eight switches, uh, while the 6465 and the 6465T, they can be connected up in a stack of up to four switches. Okay. Awesome. Um, can I integrate your hardened switches with a third party NAC? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, if you check our Spacewalkers uh, technical community website, you will find an application note, which we recently published. 
um, which is available for download as well. Uh, it's a comprehensive guide that shows you how to integrate your uh, Stellar access points and your Omni switches with Cisco ICE. So, uh, however, we recommend, of course, uh, OmniVista, which is our network management system, which provides a unified uh, network management systems, and it has a built-in NAC solution, and you can do also authentication through that, and it allows a single pane of glass configuration, uh, monitoring and management as well. Yeah, sounds sim simplified. Um, yeah. Can you explain how fingerprinting works, and what happens if the IoT is not identified in the database? So uh, fingerprinting, uh, it, uh, it, it categorizes the type of device uh, by type, by vendor, by model, and there's more than 30,000 different types of devices that are identified by their fingerprint. So we use a combination of the MAC OUI, which is the organizational unit, uh, which is the first three bytes of the device MAC address to identify the manufacturer. And then we use the DHCP uh, whenever we send the DHCP offer. Uh, we use the uh, we check the DHCP fingerprint, so the combination of DHCP options requested by the device, and then we check the, the HTTP user agent uh, to get uh, the HTTP GET request issued by the device, and then we check the DNS fingerprint as well. So all of these, if it doesn't recognize uh, the signature, it will query the NMS, which is OmniVista. If the NMS doesn't recognize, it will query the cloud database, which has over 29 million device signatures, and it will try to obtain a signature. And this, it will be automatically propagated uh, through the network uh, Great. to the APs and switches, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so those are the only questions I currently see on the panel, unless anybody else has something they would like to ask. Give anybody a second, and I don't think I see any hands up, but let me make sure. Nope, no hands up. So hopefully everyone had a chance to download the PDF in the handout section. Otherwise, uh, in the follow-up email, I, th I believe we send the recording embedded within and a link to grab the handout as well as if you missed it. Um, thank you very much, Abu Bakar, for presenting. No it was problem. awesome. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I only work on the That's products. Um, so that was great. And I hope everyone else has a great day. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Bye.